Just do it. So welcome back to the Ash Hubert and Kevin podcast. So I'm Ash and today's episode will be going through the crucial first 90 days of running a business. Um, whether you're just starting out or you've been around for a while, we're here to break down the financial strategies that will set you up for long-term success. That's right, Ash. You're right. We're here to help business owners and finance professionals make sense of the numbers so that you can leave today's episode thinking, ah, okay, I get it now. Let's dive into how you can navigate those first 90 days and turn potential risks into opportunities. But wait, why would you even listen to us? Ash, why should we listen to you? Well, that's a good point. So I'm Ash. I'm a chartered accountant with an MBA and I also hold a GAICD qualification. I've got a few more, but I'm not going to go into that right now. Not enough uh, letters in the alphabet for that. Yeah, that's right. I tried to lay them up. Um, look, I spent the last decade working in listed companies, effectively driving continuous improvement uh, through data-driven insights and business partnering. Kev? Um, Well, I'm Kevin. I'm a finance leader with experience working in various corporate teams, finance, HR, commercial, data, product, sales teams. And so between the two of us, Ash um, and Hubert when he's here, we understand how business works and the impact of accounting and finance on business. So Ash, we're going to go through the first, I mean, I think last two episodes, two episodes before we went through the first 30 days of business. Yep. Um, setting up your GL, setting up your financial structures. We're now talking about the f- next, I guess, 90 days. Take us through some of the, I guess, main points from the first 30 days. So if people that didn't catch that first episode can get caught up quickly, understand what they need to from this episode and then jump back. Yeah, sure. So we had effectively setting up your cash flow forecast and your financial reporting systems, um, getting your systems and processes down pat early on. We're talking about getting your relationships with your key stakeholders, so your suppliers, your clients, and your finance teams as well. Yeah. Um, Kev, any more to add for those ones? Um, yeah, and I think we spoke about hitting and managing your financial KPIs. We were talking about what gets measured, gets managed, um, and even spoke about data and you know junk in and junk out, those concepts. Jump into that first episode, well, two episodes ago, if you want to recap on that. Um, But yeah, now we're talking about the next 60 days, aren't we? Absolutely. So the next 60 days, Ash, I've set up all my general ledger structures. I've thought about my financial systems. I've thought about what I need to measure to be successful in this business from a finance lens. Yep. Um, Let's talk about that next 60 days and what happens after that because now we're not just talking about numbers on a spreadsheet or are we talking about numbers in a spreadsheet? Ooh. Was that yeah? We got to start from zero, right? Yeah. Oh, well played. <laughs> Look, I think if we if we break it down, yeah, you've you know if we take a blank piece of paper, that paper is no longer blank anymore. You've set up some stuff. There are some markings. So now it's about what does that look like? So what have, what have you got in front of you? Has it one? How do you interpret? Mm. So that's going to be you know like where's the money coming in from? Where are your expenses going? The next part's going to be can is there any room for efficiencies? Last, have you got any trends as well, right? Can you see any trends with your data? Like it's 90 days in on top of your first 30 days. Um, what what do you know about your own business? You know, one anecdotally, but is it being supported by the data as well? Yeah. How about yourself? A very simple one from those first 90 days is eliminating, like if you look at it in two lenses, ultimately it's all about cash flow. Um, profits are important too, but cash flow is important for the continual uh, running of your business keeping the lights on, so to speak. But if you're looking at your expenses, firstly, if you're like me and you're really bad with subscriptions and random costs going through your business, um, those first 90 days are really important for you to review that. Um, And in terms of revenue, making sure you're getting paid on time um, by your customers. And the two levers there that we talk about is managing your creditors or the people that you pay, um, making sure you can get the best payment terms with them. So extending as long out as you can. Um, as reasonable, agreed upon by both parties. Same thing with your customers. Get early enough um, payment schedules with them so they're paying you on time as well. Um, it probably won't matter as much in those first 90 days where you know, you're know you trying to chase customers but uh, or chase creditors or have, be chased by creditors, but setting those structures up yeah. are really important. Yeah, absolutely. You'll also find out quickly like with your, with your debtors, like which ones are 
I'm going to say the annoying ones, but which one does need that hand holding initially? So getting your purchase orders in, what mm. process is it? You know, why is it being held up? Yeah. What's their payment cycles as well? So you may have 14 day terms and they may have, you know, one month terms. So you guys got to agree that up front. Yeah. Because the last thing you want is someone to come and delay that and it gets pushed back by another month, right? Yeah. So, yeah. 100%. And have an idea of who's in charge of chasing that up or managing the admin of that as well. Um, a really good example I have in our current business is once a customer has billed, the management of that is with the project managers, which is actually really terrible because the project managers are so bogged down with their actual work. They don't understand the importance um, or they don't care about the admin of chasing that up or have responding to customer queries. Mm. Um, so if you have you know, your finance people, obviously, to chase things like that and keep you as a business owner um, on top of your cash, um, that's usually helpful as well. That's awesome, yeah. Um, one of the things you have here, Ash, is focusing on high revenue, high margin products. I think that's actually pretty good because it might be harder to identify that in the first 90 days. Mm. Uh, and we'll talk about this in our next podcast, maybe when we do our budgets and forecasts. But I think that's a good um, view to look at from your customers, particularly if you offer different services yep. um, to see where your, I guess, your revenue and your margin percentage um is higher and if that's an offering that you can continue to continue to offer other customers as well or cross sell um, to other customers but again we're talking first 60 days you want to you don't want to overburden yourself with things like these um, you want to give yourself enough of a track record probably a quarter or two or potentially even a year yep. before you go to that um, let's talk building for the future ash now we're first 60 days in um, things are looking good cash is good you're sleeping okay despite working 12-hour days. Sleeping in a mattress in a box, so it's all sorted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what's what's next from here? Well, I mean, we've got to plan out our scenarios, right? We've yeah. got to figure out, I suppose, when things are good, what does that look like? When things are going to be tough, what does that look like, right? So we've got to just really address what's actually going on. I think that's going to be really critical. Um, financial modelling, absolutely. So are we in a state, a state now where we can grow the business, grow our finances, what do we need? Yeah. So we need to sort of identify what those variables are. So if I'm a one-man band right now, you know, and I'm doing, let's say, a plumbing service, do I get another person, another contractor in, get them a vehicle, lots of stuff, or do yeah. I come back and figure out another model? Um, yeah. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Uh, I think that's really good because planning and those financial modeling pieces is really alluding to growth. And I had this really great quote that says, if you – if your business model is hinged on just your productivity, you don't have a business, you have a job. Mm. And so growth is all about thinking about how you can scale almost to the point where all you're doing is managing the running of the business. And that doesn't mean doing no work. It means using your skills. And obviously, if you like being in the tools and stuff, you'll still give yourself an opportunity to do that. But giving your skills and expertise to manage a business around you where you're having to hire people um, dealing with more customers than you are now so that you're not the bottleneck. Um, and in doing so, you're creating yourself that bit of freedom or financial freedom, so to speak, um, and contributing to this great economy as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, financial modeling as well, Ash, when we'll talk about this again next episode, is a fancy way of also saying forecasts, yeah. forecasting. Love a good forecast, right? Yeah, and... There's, I guess, two types of forecasts, right? Because we're talking now P&Ls, but we're also thinking how do you forecast for your cash? Yeah. Particularly if you have certain issues uh, creeping in their heads um, in your current cash flow, you want to make sure that you're not falling short, short. And if you are, you have the measures to address those through either, I don't know, an inheritance that you have or um, a bank a uh, facility um, or an overdraft could be a multiple couple of solutions in there. Yeah. Anything else on that f building for the future piece? Ash? No, I think like, yeah, like we'll, like I said, we'll go into the forecasting into more, like into more detail, but it is like, it is important to sort of address where the business is going. Like, absolutely. So don't take that lightheartedly. It is serious. If you run out of cash, your business ends pretty much then and there. Yeah. So it's, it's really about managing where you see those cash in, like, you know, sort of coming in, going out, can you guys survive the next sort of period as well? So seasonality impacts it 
your your customers impacted how they pay you what what type of work you do as well so there's mm-hmm. a lot of factors that go into it so it is important it's really important just address your business right mm. like whichever industry that's in so yeah. yeah i want to talk about something that's not on here ash hmm. that you got my um creative juices flowing on is when people think about finance they think purely about the historic nature of numbers coming in or forecasting yeah we can also look at finance in a lens of building your sales pipeline and your future opportunities and what that might mean. So one simple metric, and I'm oversimplifying this um, for the purpose of this conversation, is in a recruitment business, you can talk about, all right, I'm now looking at where's my next dollar coming from over the next six months. The only way to do that, which is really hard to forecast, is looking at metrics like from your sales um, lens is you know how many calls have my consultants made which have led to interviews, which have led to a job on, which have led to a successful job placement. And you look at those metrics, you're almost now not forecasting just your dollars. Hmm. You're linking your dollars with your operational yeah. lens. And I know you do that heavily in your job yeah. um, through reporting yeah. to connect the dots. So... I guess, how have you seen that play? And is that is the first 60 days too early to link the dots between your operational and your finance side? It's never too early. You might not have enough data to sort of, you know, address the picture straight away. But um, it's, yeah, like you'll have to change the formula in the first 90 days. So you, it might take you a year to get that, you know, right, the right sort of formula in the mix in. But you'll be sort of trying to figure out which inputs are giving you the outputs, mm. right? So absolutely, like... You know, has there been enough sort of experience between both of us to figure out, hey, calls lead to, you know, that those meetings and those meetings get you a job? Yeah, we've seen that in action. Yeah. Enough for, for enough for us to come back and say, yep, there's a direct correlation between having a phone call and getting a meeting. We can measure those things. Yeah. Now, from a meeting, can we identify, you know, can we get a job on? Generally, there is. So, mm-hmm. once again, we've been able to sort of derive those two points. I think when you're first starting off in a business, you know, I'm going to talk about just a simple business. You're going out and doing your quotes. That'd be, that's a, a very relevant example. You yeah. go out, do 50 quotes. One of those 50 quotes you're hoping is going to capitalize. So the next time you go and want to win a job, you're going to need to do those 50 quotes that's again. Right. Yeah. And you're going to effectively what you're going to try to do is shrink that ratio down. Yeah. Because the smaller it is, the less number of quotes you need to do and the more jobs you win. Yeah. Right. And that's going to happen. You know, that's that's the optimal mix. So you can absolutely do that stuff early on. Yeah. Um, where you may come to figure out the tightening, maybe when you have, you know, five different sales reps and they all got five different methods to sell, mm. you'll be actually able to track, hey, this sales rep, they don't need 10 meetings. You know, they, they need two because mm. their strike rate's 100%. Yeah. This person here is going to need 50. So you can start adjusting it based on the criteria as well. So yeah, yeah it's going to be really critical. And I think that's really important because business owners get so caught up in delivering work where it all feels great for six months and then all of a sudden there's like a dry spell and you wonder why it's because you sometimes we're not thinking about actually what's my pipeline look like and how is that resulting in my financial um all seems very common sense but it's easy to kind of forget about how you, those numbers link into your finances as well well let's use another example there like you know you're on the airbnb game as well yeah. so having that pipeline of incoming bookings that's really critical to you yeah. right so like without that you'd be running blind right yeah. completely because you wouldn't be able to factor any of your cash flow and it's just going to be expenses out the whole time right so. yeah that's right and a similar metric to the recruitment is with that airbnb game we're talking views on page mm. versus click through rate versus you know requests of booking and how that flows through and if you want to increase that pipeline you know your biggest thing isn't going out and putting um, an ad on Facebook, you actually need to increase your profile views yeah. and you need to know what um, levers to kind of pull for that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really about then understanding who your consumer is and what attracts to them, right? There's no yeah. point of having, you know, some really flash hot thing that, you know, 1% really cares about yeah. and you're missing out this 99% of the market, whatever that looks like. You get to really identify what your customer wants and what they, what they appreciate as well. So it's really about... You know, is a business actually aligned to what you thought? Mm. Where are your consumers? What do they want? What do they expect? What are the, you know, almost what are their values as well? Yeah. How does that align to you? And then you know, how do you grow that further? Right. So, yeah. And often I find 
and we'll talk here about, um, I guess, wrapping up on real life case studies. But often I find the founder or the CEO is too narrow focused to sometimes realize things like that. So you need a really good finance professional or a good ops person next year. You know, in big companies, they call it CFO or COO. But sometimes those people are pretty crucial to feeding that information in, helping the CEO, the founder make better decisions yeah. um, that are future looking. Mm. Um, we'll finish up on this, Ash. Any case studies for the first 30 to 60 days in business that you've been across or are there things that you've seen in businesses that you'd like, I guess, business owners or finance professionals in the first 30 to 60 days of a business to consider more? To consider more? Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's all been about, I think, financial health is the main one. So one of the examples that you looked up was this company called Warby Parker. So that's a, a US online sort of spectacles company, I'm going to call it. Mm. And they what, what they did was they started disrupting the market really instantly by selling you know cheap prescription glasses. But their first thing wasn't about, hey, let's go scale this to this market. Like, you know, their first priority was like, let's make sure our financial health is okay. Mm. And then let's start scaling after that. Once you make sure that your foundations are sorted, scaling is going to be... It's not, it's not going to be a walk in the park, but it's going to be a lot easier yeah. knowing that you've got some sort of financial stability with the existing ba- like the existing business. Yeah. So they went from an online sort of retailer, they went back to brick and mortar so people, their customers could actually try on glasses. But without initially getting your financial health sorted, it would have been game over. They mm-hmm. do it. So um, yeah, it's really important just get, getting back to those basics, you know, cash flow, your P&L management, you know, really making sure there's no profit to cash gap as yeah. such. So yeah. I'll tag on to that like a Jareem Buller tagging <laughs> on to an offload. Um, when you talk about scalability is also processes, right? It's yeah. We're talking finances, but also if you were to scale tomorrow, who's taking care of your hiring? Who's taking care of your retention? Who's taking care of your project management? Who's taking care of basically this extra load of invoices that are going to come through or customer contact that you're going to need? Mm. Is that kind of stuff that you don't want to fall all onto the owner or one person again? It's making sure you have all those pathways mapped out. And again, some of these you just react on the go, which is completely normal in probably 99% of businesses, but they're very important to ensure that you're not scaling for no reason and then having to cut back down because things just got too um, complex. Ash, good episode. First 60, I think we've covered the first um, 60 to 90 days of a business. Um, In our next episode, we'll go through budgeting and forecasting for a business, which is also pretty important because it helps you to look at the next financial year and your future life cycle of the business. Um, But as always, if you've enjoyed the content, if you found value out of this, um, like and subscribe. Um, We love helping small businesses, small to medium businesses thrive in this great country. Um, And we love the part of our roles where we can influence small to medium businesses through the power of their numbers. So like and subscribe if you dig that as well. Um, And catch you next episode. Thanks, Ash. Thanks, guys. All right, see you guys.